Funding for NJ Business Beat provided by New Jersey Chamber of Commerce, working to keep New Jersey in business. Online at njchamber.com and New Jersey Society of CPAs, committed to the integrity, objectivity, competence, and professionalism of CPAs and the quality of their services. This week on NJ Business Beat, President Biden gets right to work. We break down his economic orders and policies and their impact on New Jersey. Plus, a new way to tackle a pandemic economy. We look at a bill proposing a county by county approach to restrictions and reopenings. And we dig into New Jersey's new tax incentive program, how it could boost the state's economy and why some fear it will only benefit the biggest businesses. That's ahead on NJ Business Beat. This is NJ Business Beat with Rhonda Schaffler. Hello, I'm Rhonda Schaffler. Thanks for joining us on NJ Business Beat. While you're here, make sure you subscribe to our NJ Spotlight News YouTube channel to get alerted when we post new episodes and clips. We begin this week with a new administration in Washington, D.C. President Joe Biden has his work cut out for him controlling a pandemic and reinvigorating the economy. On his first day in office, President Biden signed several executive orders to provide some relief to those who are hurting financially. He extended the pause on federal student loan payments at least through September, and he extended the nationwide moratorium on foreclosures and evictions until the end of March at least. The president also signed executive orders on workplace equality, reversing a ban on diversity training for federal workers and prohibiting workplace discrimination based on gender identity and sexual orientation. President Biden has already put forward a $1.9 trillion economic recovery plan that includes additional stimulus checks and more money for unemployed workers, struggling businesses, and cash-strapped states. That has yet to get through Congress, and while we don't know if all of those proposals will be approved, New Jersey Congressman Donald Norcross thinks there will be more cooperation between the White House and Capitol Hill. I think you see a very different attitude with a President Biden. You do not see that confrontational. He's a guy who served in Senate who understands what it takes to get things done. It doesn't mean you're going to push him over, but I think he uh, will set a good example. Meantime, one economic program that was approved during the Trump administration carries over. The Small Business Administration has been busy processing thousands of small business loans under the revived PPP loan program. The SBA's district director in New Jersey, Al Titone, says so far, so good. We're already getting a lot of requests for those people who had taken the first loan out and uh, got approved, the loan got forgiven, and now they're looking for the second loan. So for me, I think that's, that's great for those that need it. In the first week of the PPP loan programs reopening, the SBA processed about 60,000 loans nationally. Could things actually be looking up for New Jersey's finances? The latest revenue numbers from the state seem to indicate that. Tax collections were higher in December, but the state treasury department called it a temporary boost as it reflected a change in the timing of when some businesses are paying their taxes. Income tax collections are still lagging behind last year's numbers, but sales tax revenues are up. So what's the bottom line? We asked our John Reitmeyer. The tax collections are still not up to last year's pace at this time, but not too, too far behind. And so for sure, if you want to take the optimistic view, there are definitely tax sources within the broader report that suggest uh, the doomsday projections uh, that we heard you know, several months ago may not be coming to fruition. There's a move afoot to re-examine New Jersey's one-size-fits-all approach to business closings during the pandemic. Lawmakers are considering a bill that would direct Governor Phil Murphy to develop a regional business reopening plan. 
I spoke with State Senator Vin Gopal about the bill he co-sponsored. Senator Gopal, there have been restaurants and businesses that have been struggling for so long uh, under these restrictions that we have, and you've crafted a bill that kind of looks at that in a very different way. So tell us the essence of this bill that will take a county by county view. Sure, this was uh, really the uh, thought process from Chairman Bersicelli, the assembly sponsor, and I thought it was a great concept. When we went through the pandemic, uh, as for everyone, uh, including Governor Murphy and, and his team, this was really a, a lot of uh, new territory as they tried to navigate this. So this bill directs the governor, any future governor, to develop and implement a county-based mitigation plan to allow businesses to operate during the pandemic. Um, the reason behind that is we saw cases uh, between North Jersey, Central Jersey, South Jersey fluctuate. Uh, different areas of the state have different um, needs, uh, whether it relates to demographics, income level, et cetera, different hospital systems. So I don't like the one size fits all approach uh, to just treat everything in the state the same. So this would direct the state to have a more strategic approach moving forward. And the, the businesses that you've spoken to, I would assume many are in support of this idea. 100%, yeah. I think a lot of businesses, uh, uh, small businesses, I understand that they want to stay safe. They want to keep their employees safe. Um, but they also know that uh, a one size fits all may not make sense. Uh, a town, uh, for example, a business in Red Bank uh, being under the exact same policies as a small business in say Sussex County may or may not make sense to, based on um, population, uh, density, uh, et cetera. What about the idea that if people are traveling from county to county or business to business, um, will that mitigate some of the benefits of this bill? Yeah, I think all that needs to be taken into consideration. We know uh, through our, our, our state and county GIS technology uh, and, and monitoring, obviously, traffic lights and incoming and outcoming of different hospital systems and, and streets, we know where, where folks are at. So I, I just think it's a more strategic approach. I think all that needs to be taken into consideration, especially the county has a jail, a university, a large congregate, so congregate facility. All of these things, I think, need to be uh, in place. I think the the governor did a good job in March and April as it related to shutting the state down and trying to get COVID-19 uh, in gear. The concern is after there was a lack of clarity coming from the state in the months leading. Uh, and it really at no fault of anyone because every state across the union is, is trying to do this for the first time. But the question is, could there be a more strategic approach as we dealt with businesses, especially those that were trying to operate outdoors quickly? to treat them differently. And I think we're in a much different place today uh, as we enter the vaccination period than we were six, seven months ago. But um, some of these strategic decisions could be, uh, you know, the difference between opening and closure for a small business. Senator Gopal, good to speak with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Feels pretty good to talk about reopening businesses and not closing them down as vaccines slowly roll out across the state and we get the sense that yes, things will get back to normal. State leaders are focused on how to rebuild New Jersey's economy. In our deep dive this week, we take a closer look at what's officially called the New Jersey Economic Recovery Act of 2020. That's the new law that created a $14 billion tax incentive program for the state. The rationale behind the program from the Murphy administration's viewpoint is simple. It will create jobs, according to State Treasurer Elizabeth Maramoyo. Our economy took a hit in this state, like economies across the country. And I think the hope is that this will be able to provide the incentives to allow New Jersey coming out of this uh, pandemic and this fiscal crisis to uh, strengthen our businesses, bring more businesses here, put more people to work. Um, and that's the goal. But getting to the goal line is going to take some time. This is a massive program, and the state has to write all sorts of regulations to get it set up. Tim Sullivan, the CEO of the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, shared the timeline with us. Over the next you know, really three to six to nine months, you'll start seeing these new programs roll out because um, it's important. You know, we have 
there's a balance um, that has to be struck. One is there's an urgency because we want to create uh, jobs and support the economy right now, whether that's Main Street or whether that's in innovation or whether that's in clean energy or any other industry. We've also got to do this right. Uh, you know, we learned a lot in 2018 and 2019 and 2020 about some of the challenges of the prior programs uh, that we, you know, we don't want to repeat the mistakes of the past. We want to learn from them. There were a lot of mistakes. New Jersey's last tax incentive program was mired in controversy with an independent task force concluding that companies that didn't qualify for tax breaks were getting them and the EDA was faulted for its lack of oversight. When all this went down, Governor Murphy declared his administration would ensure that every dollar of taxpayer money would be spent wisely and effectively. He said at the time, moving forward, any incentives offered must produce the number of promised jobs for our state. So will that happen this time? And will incentives encourage development in areas that really need it? Trenton Mayor Reed Gussiar and I talked about that. Mayor, this new tax incentive program is supposed to create jobs. It's supposed to rebuild communities that don't have grocery stores, that have brownfields, that have historic buildings. From your vantage point, do you think it's going to help Trenton? This was uh, probably designed for the city of Trenton. We have old historic buildings um, that date back to the revolution. We were part of the... um, uh, man, industrial revolution of uh, manufacturing. And um, we really needed something to jumpstart our economy, particularly after COVID. And so I really applaud the governor and the EDA for really working hard to really target um, urban New Jersey to make sure that um, we would get the incentive programs that would attract developers uh, to come into the city. Just keep in mind that it's easier to uh, plow a cornfield out in suburbia than to come in and and redo bricks in the city. Mayor, have you heard of any businesses that are waiting to relocate to Trenton, but they they wanted incentives? I mean, have you had any of those such conversations? Absolutely. And um, uh, they've they've been on the peripheral waiting for the incentive package to come. A lot of uh, businesses, it's their bottom line. They would have to take over properties that they would have to rehabilitate rather again than uh, go in warehousing that could be put up in suburbia. So it needs though, we need those um, incentives, particularly when you're talking about hazardous uh, waste sites uh, to to convert them. Um, So there are indeed um, developers who are willing to come into the city to do the right thing. Uh, They just need the incentive package to make it work. Mayor, as you recall, of course, the last tax incentive package, there was a lot of criticism over. And and one of those criticisms centered on the fact that big businesses were getting incentives. It seems like this plan really tries to target smaller businesses. Do you think it will shake out in a more equitable way than what we saw last time? Yeah, I think the governor heard the message about the criticism of the last package and uh, whether we're talking about food deserts that will create um, uh, small food markets that will will come to the city, uh, working with historic tax credits to um, reinvent our abandoned warehouses and our old buildings. Um, That really is targeted for a smaller enterprise uh, to come and set up shop in the city. You seem very bullish on this plan. Is there anything you don't like about it? Uh, We could always use uh, the targeting just to Trenton itself or more money, but um, I think it's a great, uh, fairly balanced uh, uh, product, uh, one that that any um, municipality in New Jersey can take advantage of. Mayor Gassiara, thanks so much for your input. Thank you, Rhonda. Whether or not this new tax incentive program will create jobs, attract businesses, and revitalize economically challenged neighborhoods has yet to be seen. But one critic insists this is not how the state should be spending taxpayer dollars. I sat down with Brandon McCoy of New Jersey Policy Perspective. Brandon, you have in the past raised concerns about New Jersey's tax incentives and recently raised some concerns about this new law that Governor Murphy recently signed. How are you feeling about it? What are some of the worries you have? Still have concerns about the overall strategy that it represents. 
uh, you know, doubling down on what was under the previous administration a failed strategy that didn't really yield that much in economic growth or development. Uh, and one that around the country, you know, the, the most recent and modern research shows uh, these sorts of tax incentive programs really don't work at work. At best, they work, you know, 25 percent of the time. Uh, so that means, you know, we're, <laughs> you take you take 75 percent of the total cost of the program. That's money that technically is down the drain. So I guess what's there's a lot of things different about this program compared to last, but there is at least a recognition of trying to spread development out trying to put developments in communities where there's need, uh, just things like addressing food deserts or trying to encourage grocery stores in certain areas. Does this attempt seem to at least um, address the concerns that all of the money in the past was going to big businesses or a lot of it and certain communities were getting left behind? Or is that still not enough to, I guess, um, persuade you that um, it might be different this time? No, because, you know, honestly, at the end of the day, the concern is the scale, right? Um, Governor Murphy himself in his 2019 State of the State Address said for the state to dedicate over a billion dollars a year towards this program, uh, quote, simply put, is nuts. Uh, now we're dedicating nearly $1.5 billion a year. So uh, the scale is way too large. Uh, we are happy that there are improved oversight reforms in here. There's a lot of things to make sure that we can, uh, you know, prevent the corruption and sort of abuse and, and fraud that we saw in the previous iteration of the program. And quite honestly, you know, our concerns have nothing to do with the men and women at the Economic Development Authority. They're really, really good at what they do, the professionals, and we trust them. But this sets a worrying precedent because New Jersey is way out of step with what other states do in this area. Other states spend around $100 million a year on economic development in this manner. Now we're going to be spending over 16 times what they spend. And again, modern research shows uh, you can you can target it as, as great as you want. You can target it towards better things. Uh, the It is a strategy uh, in, in and of itself that is flawed. And there's better uses for these, for these dollars, ultimately. I guess one thing that's interesting, too, is that we don't know exactly when we'll see, if at all, the positive impact from spending that kind of money. It's not like you provide a tax incentive and, and the next month you can see that you got a return on your investment. So in some ways, it's still kind of hard to assess progress. Yeah, and that's kind of built into the excuses to support these sorts of things because the answer is always, oh, well, you know, you just haven't let it work long enough, right? You just not just, you just haven't, you haven't let it sit in, you know, or, or take place long enough to see the benefit. Uh, the fact of the matter is that the benefits are never as big or as, as um, robust as people claim they will be. And again, they're incredibly costly. You know, if we want to see investments in our communities, we already have the tools to do that. We already have the assets to support. If we support, you know, the development of homes, we support the investment in uh, public transportation and our rail and our bus system, and we support, you know, uh, in improving access to uh, affordable and high quality education, uh, we will see the economy of the state grow. But what this represents is a doubling down on a trickle down strategy that says, let's give dollars and tax incentives to corporations and trust them that they'll do their very, very best. And again, while there may be a story or two where that is a success, uh, the vast majority of them are not. I guess when you look back at Amazon, we threw billions at Amazon and they chose not to go to Newark. So is there a reason to think corporations will come to New Jersey? I mean, what's going to get corporations to come to New Jersey is investing in things that I talked about, right? Like what corporations want at the end of the day is a educated workforce that is going to be uh, attracted to live in a place because it has interesting communities and fun communities and that they can get around. And so, you know, if we provide that, corporations will locate here. And so rather than trying to throw dollars at a corporation, and the Amazon example is perfect because that is the richest company in the history of the world. They don't need dollars. They don't need more money. They're perfectly fine. What's going to attract them and what ended up winning out the day when they were located to the DMV, you know, um, Delaware, uh, Maryland, Virginia area was access to resources and assets. It was access to that market. It was access to a uh, highly educated workforce with good schools. If we provide those things, we'll be just fine. But we, we keep on trying to take shortcuts and saying, hey, if you come to New Jersey, we'll cut your taxes. That's not what people want at the end of the day. They want assets. 
Brendan McCoy, always a pleasure. We'll talk again. Thank you. And thank you for watching NJ Business Beat. Make sure you subscribe to our NJ Spotlight News YouTube channel, and you'll get an alert when we post a new episode or clip. And are you a business interested in sponsoring NJ Business Beat? Contact Steve Priolo at the email or phone number you see at the bottom of your screen. I'm Rhonda Schaffler. We'll see you next week. Funding for NJ Business Beat provided by New Jersey Chamber of Commerce, working to keep New Jersey in business, online at njchamber.com, and New Jersey Society of CPAs, committed to the integrity, objectivity, competence, and professionalism of CPAs and the quality of their services.